On today's show, we'll be talking about how to shoot video and still simultaneously on your Lumix cameras. Today's show is brought to us by FidoNet.com. Good morning and welcome everybody to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily show on photography on YouTube every weekday morning, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. Today's show is the second time that we are being sponsored, an official sponsor. It's like the coolest thing ever. And look, I get to do this. I get to throw up the graphic and I go, wow, look at that domain registration, web hosting. Today's photo moment is brought to you by phytonet.com. Whether you need a domain name, web hosting, or your own virtual server, phytonet.com are the people to talk to. And to save 10%, be sure to use the code PHOTOJOSEPH on checkout. At one point, I'll actually memorize that. I won't even have to read it, but then by then he'll probably change it. So I don't know how that was going to work. Hey, so today we are talking about shooting stills and video simultaneously. This is a feature that's been in Lumix cameras for a long time. It's a feature I had admittedly never ever explored. And then one of our viewers by the name of Joseph Dahl wrote into me to say, hey, this is a really cool feature. I did a video on it, check it out. And I checked it out and I said, oh, that's cool. I gotta really talk about this. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna talk about how this feature works. This is not only on the GH5, but I, I don't know how far back it goes, but I grabbed a GX8 and a GX85 and they all have this feature in them. So I think this has kind of been around for a long time. The idea here is that while you're shooting video, you can simultaneously shoot still photos. Wow, right? So there's two different ways you can do this. You can have it so that when you're shooting video and you press the button to take a still picture, and we'll show you how all this goes, but you to have it so that when you're shooting video, you push the button to take a still, it essentially does a frame grab. So you get a still image that is the same resolution of the video that you were shooting and the video continues uninterrupted. So it is, it's essentially a frame grab. It's just happening now when you push the button as opposed to having to scrub through it later and look for it. The second option is that it will momentarily pause video recording, shoot a still photo using whatever settings you have your still camera set to, and then go back to video. You still get a continuous video file, however, there is a pause in it. There's a momentary little mm, pause in it. So it's one of these things where you have to decide what's more important to you. Is the video the priority or is the still photography the priority? And that's exactly the terminology that is used when you're setting it up. So let's take a look. We're going to use the GH5 to set it up because that's what I have plugged in, but it doesn't really matter what you use. So we're going to go into the menu system and under the, the video camera icon menus, the motion picture menu, if you scroll to, well, on the GH5, it's page three or four, but of course, depending on your camera, you might find it somewhere else. And it says picture mode in record. And from there, you can choose what your priority is. Is your video camera the priority or is your still photography the priority? So you can see how it's, it's on the front there. We're gonna go and choose video to start. So this means that when I'm shooting video, if I shoot a still, I will not interrupt the video stream. Video and audio will not be interrupted, continue smoothly and fluidly, but we will get a JPEG on the SD card. So to do this, you don't, you can't be in the creative movie mode. So the, the technically official movie shooting mode, you have to be in a still mode and then push the magic red button on the top of the camera. Let's see here. Let's get this in the position here onto the other camera. There we go. You're going to be shooting in still mode. So I'm in like after party. Now I could be in program. I could be in shutter party manual, whatever you want, doesn't matter. But then you push this button, the red button here to start recording video. If you are in the movie mode here, this feature doesn't work. You have to be in one of the still shooting modes and then push the red button to start shooting video. While you're shooting video, you push the shutter button just like you normally would to take a picture and it'll take a picture based on the qualifications that we just told it. So in this case, again, we told it to shoot video priority. So it's going to uninterrupt, uninterrupt the video. It's going to uninterrupt the video. Excellent. It's going to not interrupt the video. So let's see it in practice. So let me, um, I'm going to take a picture of this gorgeous scene here that I've set up for you. Let me at least turn some cameras around so it looks halfway reasonably decent here. There we go. Like that. This is like crooked angled shot. We'll call it art, whatever. Doesn't matter. Okay. Let's switch over to this. So I'm in still mode. If I push the button to take a still picture, it's going to take a still picture as you would expect. I push the red button. Oh, it's going to happen on the video out. Let's see. It's going to blank out. Is it going to come back? Ooh, please come back. Yes, it comes back. Okay. So now it's shooting video. All right. We're shooting video. La, 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 la. And then I push the shutter button and notice up in the top right corner, see the little red icon that comes up. I'll push it again. It shows 16 by nine medium. That's the resolution of it. And you see the little, um, the little JPEG icon It's writing. So it's telling me that it's writing JPEGs to the card. You can also hear that nothing is happening. 
right? We're not hearing any changes in the shutter. Okay, I'm going to stop recording. I'll push the little red button to stop recording, and it will momentarily stop that and bring us back into still shooting mode. And we are back into still shooting mode. Now, the reason, incidentally, you're seeing the screen go black there. There is no delay. When the, well, I mean, the only delay is the finishing the write the file to the card, like normally when you start shooting, start and stop shooting a video. The delay that you're seeing here is because of the HDMI out. It has to change formats of what it's sending out. That's the only reason you're seeing a black screen there. When you're shooting it, that doesn't happen. Okay, so we just shot video, uninterrupted video, with shooting stills. And if I hit play, well, this is not going to work. Is if I hit play, um, I don't think I'll be able to show you the thumbnails. I don't remember how that works. Let's see here. Let me go back. Um, well, oh, yeah, there's. Okay. So we bring this up, and you can see... It doesn't have the icon, it doesn't show the icon of the video out, but you've got one of these is the video file, um, and then there's a series of stills. Okay, so that's that's what it just did. I know you can't really see it here, but that's okay, just believe me, that's what it does. So now let's go back into the menu setting and change how this works. So, all right, sync, there we go, sync back up. So now I go into the menu setting and I go back into here again, go back to the video menu, motion picture menu, picture mode and record, and now I'm going to switch it over to still priority. So now in still priority, at first glance, it doesn't look any different, right? I'm, I'm not shooting video right now. I want to take a still picture, take a still picture, yada, yada. Now I push the red button to record the video and give it a moment. It's going to come back up on screen for you. And there we go. It's recording video. You see the countdown timer, timing, countdown timer, counting. And notice in the top right, the icon has changed. The camera is now in the front. And when I push the button to take a picture, you see how you actually heard the shutter go. It actually paused the video recording, recorded a still, and you can also see up in the top right, it shows raw. It is shooting a raw picture at that point. And then if I stop recording video. But in that video file, I'll have a momentary, it's not a pause, it's like a freeze frame. You get, um, I forget how many frames now, but you get a series of, of frames that is just locked on that frame and no sound during that time. So it's interrupted video stream, but you have the full quality still picture. So you can hear what's happening. The, the, well, there's no mirror, but the shutter has actually opened and closed. It has taken a mechanical shutter photo as opposed to just extracting a still video from it. And that's how that works. And so you, you just need to decide what's more important to you. Are you shooting stills and you want to have a little video to go along with it? Or are you shooting video and you want to have a little bit of stills to go along with it? And I think it's a really powerful function to have. And John Dole, who wrote in about this, is using it in weddings, among other things. And he actually sent some pictures over for me to show you. Now, from what I've seen, the pictures look like they're all 4-3 aspect ratio, which tells me that these were shot in this second mode with picture priority. So he's shooting video and then shoots that. But we'll take a closer look and we'll see. Before we do that, though, I got to tell you about this. Got to tell you all about our host. Our host today for the Photo Moment Show is FidoNet.com. Whether you need a domain name, web hosting, or your own virtual server, FidoNet.com are the people to talk to. With access to more than 400 top-level domains, you're sure to find the right domain for your project. Or do you need to host a website? FidoNet.com are specialists in web hosting. With more than 20 years experience serving websites, the folks at FidoNet.com will, will be able to help you get your website online in record time and at an affordable price. FidoNet.com, where those in the know go, and those who use the code PHOTOJOSEPH on checkout save 10%. Check out our sponsor. We're so happy to have a sponsor. This is awesome. Thank you, John, for doing that. There's some questions coming up here. Actually, before we look at the still pictures that we've got set aside from Mr. Dahl, let's take a look at the questions that have been flying, flying by. Uh, let's see here. Marvin's saying that the weather in, in, is a major topic in the UK, so don't get you started. That's funny. All right, Ben5 says, among other things, the place for, oh, uh, yeah, okay, you're getting into new photo openers. X-Cube, here, he has a question. Do you know what is the difference with the GH5 Oceanic version, Australia? In Amazon.ca, there's a vendor that is selling it cheaper than the North American version. Ah, okay. If you, that's called gray market. <laughs> there's no difference in the hardware. Cameras have slightly different model numbers depending on the region. And it has to do with warranty support. This is my understanding of the whole gray market idea. It has to do with warranty. You want to buy a North American model in North America because the camera will then go to a North American service center for support. Europe, same thing. Oceania, the same thing. I think there's, I don't know how many regions there are, but there's a variety of them. Sometimes the model numbers change, right? The GH5 is just the GH5, but this camera right here in the US is, or North America is the GX85. In Europe, it's the GX80. And I don't know what else it, where else it might change to other things, but uh, that's, that's the modeling number. I don't 
know why it's cheaper to sell gray market. I never have understood that. But sometimes from legitimate stores, you can buy a, a camera that is the European, like in the North America, you can buy a camera that is the European version or something else that's considered gray market and you can get it a little bit cheaper. The problem is you cannot get support for it in the US or in North America. So you call up Panasonic, you go, oh, my camera's doing this funky thing. And they say, what's the serial number? And you tell them and they go, yeah, that's not one of ours. You need to send that to a European support center. That's the problem with buying gray market. So you may save a couple of dollars, it's, it's definitely against the rules. I don't know that it's illegal per se, but it is not following the rules. Buy in your local region, get something so that you have support where you're supposed to have it, and everybody is happy that way. It, you may spend a little bit more, but you're not spending more. You're spending what you're supposed to be spending. That's just the way it is. So there, there's why you'll see price differences when you look at ones from different regions. Uh, well, again, I don't know why there's a price difference, but that's, that's what it means when you see the price differences. Um, okay, and let's see here. Then uh, Marvin says, can you control the camera in this mode with the phone app? Oh, that's a very good question. That is a very good question. Let's find out. Let's try it. So he's asking, can we do the whole photo video stills thing from the app? Well, we'll try it. We'll do it. We'll take a look at the pictures and then we'll try that out. I think it's a fantastic question. Mm-hmm. Burns Texas is very nice in the voiceover for the sponsor. Well, thank you very much. I put on my special voiceover voice. And X Cube says, isn't the European time limited for video recording? No. Nope, nope, nope. All over 30 minutes. Uh, Burns Tech, I've had issues buying gray market products. It's such a pain in the ass to get warranty support. There you go. Dave Dale Studio says, if in vi- video priority, is the quality for both video and the image the same as taking them individually? The sensor, okay, it, it is a... a, a it is a frame grab. When you're in video priority, it is a frame grab. So you're getting a JPEG at whatever size, format, ratio, et cetera, you've set the camera to for shooting video. That's what you're getting. It is, as far as I know, it is really the same thing as opening up the video on the timeline and extracting a still, but this obviously makes it a heck of a lot easier because you're shooting and you just push the button and you get it to capture that moment. Beardy Face says, so if I move to North America with my European camera, I have a problem. The problem's a big word. Um, you bought it legitimately, but you will need to send it back to Europe to get support, so uh, to get uh, a warranty service on it. So, yeah, that's the way that works. Um, okay, last one. John says, is there an additional tax on cameras imported into the EU, UK if they record more than 30 minutes? Just why I believe the GX85 are different. Okay, so that, that, I need to get clarification on this. Okay, so what he's talking about is there is this video tax which is why camera, uh, Canons, Nikons, and so on don't shoot over 30 minutes of video. They shoot 29, nine, 29 minutes and 29 seconds of video because once you hit 30, that becomes a video camera and it has a different tax applied to it. it as far as I know, Lumix cameras don't do that, don't have that limitation. They just pay the tax or whatever it is so that you don't have that. That's not why there's a difference in the model numbers. Now, okay, the, the difference in the model numbers is simply for tracking the different regional bodies. The, the tax, whether there is or isn't a tax on the GX, on the Lumix cameras, if there is, they are paying for it. Panasonic is. You don't have to deal with that on your end. I don't, I didn't think that any of the Lumix cameras had that limitation anywhere in the world. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I could be wrong on that. But as far as I know, they don't. It's one of the advantages of shooting Lumix. That's what it was always in my head. But I could be wrong. So I'll tell you what, I will I will clarify this because I think this is a good thing to actually know a solid answer on. Uh, we will look this up. Ryan, please write this down. I need to talk to Panasonic about the 2929 limitation or 2959 limitation on, uh, on cameras worldwide. So I will find that out for you. Um, oh, Beardy Fist says that his GX80 has a record limit of 29.59. Okay, well, there you go. So some of them are. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at some pictures, shall we? Let's look at the pictures that Joseph Dahl sent over because they're really nice pictures. Get my iPad plugged back in. Oh, and for anybody who was trying to watch yesterday's show, uh, the, the Affinity Photo stacking that we meant to do on iOS, the focus merging, it was a total disaster. Uh, the show did not go on. I rescheduled it. I figured out later it was completely my fault. So it was not Affinity's software screwing up. It was me screwing up. I hit the wrong button. You got to push the right button, apparently. Who knew? So I will redo the show on Monday, and uh, it's on the calendar, and we ha- we'll actually have two shows on Monday because I'm not going to decide not to reschedule the next one. So, so there we go. All right, uh, let's look at some pictures, shall we? So these are photos provided courtesy of Joseph Dahl. These are all shot 
in the video mode. Now, given that these are 4-3 aspect ratio, I am assuming that these were shot with a photo priority. But he didn't confirm that and he is not on the show right now to watch, so I cannot, I cannot say for sure. But these are all beautiful still photos. These do not look like video grabs. These are just really nice, sharp, apparently high resolution. Let's see if I zoom in. I mean, these are, he sent me to the JPEGs, obviously, so I can't tell for sure. Um, but they all look great. They all look great. So this is a really, really cool option to have. So these have been colored a little bit, and this one's definitely treated. You can see some, some treatment being done to these pictures. Uh, so not straight out of camera, but that's, you know, that's awesome. He's got pictures while shooting video. So every one of these picture, still pictures were shot while shooting video, and Joseph is saying how much he loves this feature, loves this capability. I think that if you're shooting something that is primarily, so you're on a still photography shoot, but you want to have those those little video vignettes because you're you know your client maybe you're doing a portrait session and you're not going to tell your client you're shooting video you're shooting stills and then you have that ability to go hey check out this little extra product that I made if you'd like this it's only another X dollars you can you know upsell it add it onto your package you can have this little video for this and um, you know it's pretty cool pretty cool thing to have to be able to show if you're shooting strobes if you're shooting in the studio with strobes then definitely you're going to have to be shooting. Um, shooting with a still priority one so that those flash can fire and you get the proper lighting on that. That also means you're going to have to have enough ambient light in the studio going so that you can shoot the video. So that would be a, that'd be interesting. I should try and set that up sometime. Be an interesting challenge to do that. Clearly a lot easier outdoors dealing with natural light, but um, as you saw all these pictures were. But yeah, I don't see why you couldn't do it with strobes. It'd be a little bit of a challenge. I'll have to look into that. I'll have to try that sometime. Anyway, so there you go. Um, ben 5 saying the GH3 has a video time limit. So I guess maybe the European ones do have the time limits except for the GH5. Interesting. I will have to find out more. I will, I will, I will. Okay, um, that's that, actually. That's everything we wanted to do on there. So we're going to end this show and come back in for a commentary section. So thank you very much for watching. If you're watching live right now, please scroll down right now and hit that thumbs up button. We love the thumbs up. That's always very nice. Helps uh, promote the video, get more people watching. If you really don't like today's video, you know, you can do this, but tell me in the comments constructively what you didn't like, and we'll try to make it more better. Uh, what else do I want to say? We, uh, oh, yeah, the podcast. The podcast is up. If you haven't seen it yet, go check out the new podcast, the PhotoApps podcast. It is here on YouTube. It is also at photoapps.expert. If you just click on the podcast button, you'll see all of them. Of course, that one's going to be right at the top. Or you can subscribe in iTunes. You can head over to iTunes and grab, uh, just search for PhotoApps podcast or search, search for Photo Joseph. You'll find it that way as well. And the latest episode is on Backblaze. That might be, incidentally, the end of season two. I don't have another one scheduled, and uh, honestly, I could use a little break. <laughs> it's a lot of work doing these podcasts. So I think that's going to be the end of season two. We'll wait a little while and see uh, see what happens next. So uh, did you check out that podcast? It's, uh, it's a good one. It was fun. It's really educational and informative. Okay, that's it. If you're watching live, stick around. We'll be right back for the commentary. If you are not watching live, then uh, click on the box that's about to pop up on your screen to watch the commentary section of this show. We'll be right back.